Some time ago, I had a small accident. Generally, I have lost my RX link during the flight when I wasn't really that far away from myself. Now, I probably could see it coming considering the fact that the morning before I saw this. But to be perfectly honest, I actually thought that it's just an interference and stuff like this. So, you know, nothing to worry. So in this video, I want to share some stuff that I learned about getting the most out of your crossfire so you don't have to end up like me searching for your quad in forests in the mountains, which by the way was found. What up everyone, it's Lexi and in today's video I'm gonna share some of the knowledge that I got from a really nice gentleman, Heiko Sheng, who was telling me all of those things while we were looking for my quad in the mountains. Now, some of those things I didn't know of, so maybe you didn't know of too. Let's go. Make sure your antenna is actually tightly in. Most of the drone backpacks don't really allow us to put the whole radio with the antenna inside, so what we do usually, I don't know if you do it, but I do it a lot, I just unscrew the antenna and put it on the radio, meaning that I'm unscrewing and screwing in the antenna a lot. Now, what this may cause is the fact that the antenna one day eventually gets loose. As you can see here, there is a security ring which is supposed to prevent the whole thing from moving. But the thing is, what if you are a weakling, like me, and don't even know that it's not tight enough? So to prevent this from happening, all you have to do is to take the tools with you just to make sure that all of the rings are tightly in and the antenna is not really moving inside because this may actually cause the failsafe. Now, in my situation from the video before, my antenna was not in due to the fact that one, the security ring was a little bit, a lot, uh, too high and I didn't even know that my antenna is not tightly in. Another thing is that my antenna is actually pretty old and the whole module is old, so I kind of figured that it's normal that it's moving at this point and that was absolutely my mistake. The thing is, if the antenna is not deep enough, this little dingle there is not going to touch, so you're gonna get information kind of in intervals or something like this because it's not really touching it's not getting full amounts of energy or information that it should be having because it's just not touching imagine the situation that you have those cabled headphones and at one point one of them stops walking unless you are doing something with the cable putting it into the right position and stuff like this it's basically the same situation but you don't want to do it with your drone two antennas are always better if you are planning some serious long range, investing in the Crossfire module with diversity is something that you should totally consider. Reason being, two antennas are always better than one. If you are flying with the drone that has antenna just on the front, yes, when you are flying like this, it may be happening that whenever you turn or do something like this, you will lose contact with the antenna. If you put the antenna on top, like up front and in the back, then whatever position you're gonna put the drone in, you're still gonna get a little bit of link, meaning that you will be even more secure during your long range flights. Now, for example, in this situation, if you have antenna like I had back then, at one point when you move, in the really unfortunate way, like here, I don't see the antenna at all. So it may be happening that you move in a really unfortunate way and you get the RX locks. So here again, even if you want to have your antenna just like I did right here, putting another one somewhere here would actually make a lot of sense because then whatever happens, whichever angle you are in, you still have RX link. Position, position, position. Did you know that your Crossfire antenna should stay as far away as possible from any type of electronics? Let's not over exaggerate this one, but I personally had no idea. So as you may imagine, um, I didn't care and my antenna is actually next to FC and ESC. The antenna's poles should actually stay as far away as possible from conductors such as carbon as well. Generally, if you have just one antenna on your Crossfire, the best position for it is somewhere farther away from carbon, just like here, I'm giving you a little bit of a close up, as far away from electronics as possible. So mine is actually on a little dingle, so it's kind of farther away, but it's absolutely not perfect. It's actually far away from perfect because it's too close to FC and ESC anyway, but it has to be clear from anything and has to be safe from your turn. So whichever turn I'm gonna take, this one pole will always be somewhere within the range of my radio. So the antenna, I can actually move it, shouldn't be like this, because then when I turn, 
it's really unfortunate it has to be kind of standing like this but yeah you can actually destroy it while landing and stuff like that yeah but you know what's most important in this is up to you if you have two antennas, having one on the front and on the back is absolutely okay. Just like in the flywheel, it has front, it should also have a back. So then it's kind of like clearer from stuff. And also the antenna here, if you can see it, is a little bit farther away from the carbon, but it's also far away from perfect. Antenna state. So yeah, we all crash, stuff happens, uh, we are losing parts of stuff and sometimes those antennas from Crossfire don't look as they should. Now the thing is, if you want to really do some long range, be sure that your antenna state is basically splendid. Sometimes it may be happening that your antenna is broken in the least fortunate place, like next to the UFL or next to something that you are actually having covered with tape. So be sure to always check your antenna state and if it's not broken. If you are kind of losing the regs really fast, be sure to come back as fast as possible because maybe there's something wrong with your antenna. Be sure that it's in a really splendid state, whatever is going on. Check your settings. This may not impact you as much if you are using Crossfire just for your freestyle and long range, but back in the day, like even half a year ago, I was using my Crossfire both for racing and for freestyle. Now the thing was, for racing we had special settings and there's a setting called race and we could just do 25 milliwatts. So changing those settings wasn't really on my list of priorities, which was probably something that also caused the issue presented in the video below. And yeah, it happens, but be sure that your settings are absolutely correct. So here's a little bit of a cheap cheat and I'm also leaving you the full uh, crossfire manual if you don't know about it it's down below in the description box so be sure to check it out just as a quick cheat sheet be sure that you have more than 25 milliwatts region open and dynamic power on and of course not the race option because I am almost sure that this is one of the reasons of my failsafe correct transmission frequency TBS claims that it's really important to set the right transmission frequency. So here's a little bit of a cheat sheet, uh, actually two of them. I'm actually in Europe, so I'm using the 868 megahertz. I hope that you learned a thing or two about taking care of your crossfire and taking care of your drones that are flying on crossfire itself. And if you did, leave me a comment down below and let me know if you learned something. Was this something that you didn't know about or didn't think about? or know about but don't do which is something that i do a lot personally for me when it goes to my last fail save the reasons were one two three five and six i was like laugh of pain now so in general almost everything that could go wrong did go wrong like in general my antenna was in good condition but that's basically it that's basically all I had for you today. Thank you very much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video and if it helped you in any way, leave it a thumbs up to help me make algorithm really happy. And don't forget to subscribe for more stuff like this. If you just want to hang out with me, I do have a Twitch. So if you have Amazon Prime, you can actually go there and subscribe to me with your Prime. It doesn't cost you anything, but does support this channel so I can make more educational stuff like presented here. In the meantime, maybe this video will spark your attention. Maybe you like this one. Who knows, who knows. If you want to join our Discord, be sure to check out Patreon, which is just right here and it starts at two euros a month. So thank you very much for considering and I'm gonna see you in the next one. See ya sometime, bye.